Viral article claims the Chinese internet is accelerating its collapse. China's COVID surge fuels spike in lung cancer deaths. Unemployment spikes in China, job market chaos. Nikkei reports surge in desperate Chinese families fleeing to America amid economic slump. CCP launches military drills around Taiwan, a share plunge while Taiwan stocks soar. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Viral article claims the Chinese internet is accelerating its collapse. A substantial number of historical articles and information on websites in mainland China that use simplified Chinese have mysteriously disappeared. This issue gained widespread attention after an article titled The Chinese Internet is Accelerating Its Collapse went viral on the evening of May 22. However, this article was subsequently deleted from several social media platforms. The article was originally written by He Jian, a self-media personality. He highlighted a troubling example when searching for Jack Ma on Baidu and filtering results from 1998 to 2005, only one result appears, and it's inaccurate. The article linked is dated 2021, not fitting the specified search period, and it's unclear why it appears in the search. He Jian suggests that retrieving accurate historical information about Jack Ma from around the year 2000 is nearly impossible on Baidu and similar searches on Bing or Google yield only slightly better results, with most information still being disorganized or incorrect. He speculates whether the difficulty in finding information about Jack Ma, a controversial figure, might be due to unspecified sensitive reasons. After testing various websites, names, and time frames, He Jian discovered a shocking trend. Almost all popular Chinese websites from certain periods, along with many personal websites, have had all their past information vanish. Sina is an exception, it still retains a handful of articles from more than 10 years ago, but these are the rare exceptions in an otherwise complete erasure of content. The article The Chinese Internet is Accelerating Its Collapse warns that a significant problem is going unnoticed, the pre-mobile internet Chinese content has almost entirely disappeared, contrary to the belief that the internet retains all memories, which, it turns out, is as short-lived as a goldfish's. Renmin University's professor Nia Huihua reacted strongly to this situation on Weibo, expressing shock over how his own blogs on platforms like Sohu and NetEase have vanished. He questioned how substantial internet-based models could be developed on such a shaky information foundation, emphasizing the terrifying nature of information eradication. Radio Free Asia reported further examples of this issue, including the disappearance of historical data from the Beijing Yuan Ping Center, a civic organization. Liu Jun, the co-founder, attributed the loss of their public service records to internet censorship, a prevalent issue that highlights the Chinese Communist Party's significant role in controlling information. Chongqing scholar Mr. Wang reminisced about past articles that engaged in historical discourse and critique, which are now likely to be problematic under current media controls led by the Chinese Communist Party, making deletions inevitable. He Jian attributes the rapid disappearance of historical articles and information on the Chinese internet to two factors. The first is economic, changes in business models or operational difficulties have led to the shutdown of websites. The second factor is regulatory influence. The regulation of internet information has evolved from being non-existent to existent and from initially lenient to increasingly strict. Content that was once legally permissible no longer meets the new regulatory requirements, or content that was previously in a legal gray area has now been reclassified as illegal. Such content is promptly removed. Professor Fong Chongyi from the University of Technology Sydney comments that these developments are both horrifying and terrifying. They have had a devastating effect on the Chinese people's understanding of their own history. From a political perspective, what was once considered a gray area is now deemed black. The increase in surveillance measures and a plethora of new laws, such as anti-espionage laws, have overwhelmed operators, forcing them to eliminate information. China's COVID surge fuels spike in lung cancer deaths. Recent reports from various regions in China indicate a continued pandemic and an uptick in lung cancer deaths. Oncologists have noted an increase in patients with pulmonary nodules and lung cancer, with many diagnosed with adenocarcinoma after surgery. 
research indicates that the incidence rate of lung cancer for individuals over 40 is nearly 2%. Significant increases in lung cancer fatalities are being reported nationwide. Mr. Wen from Hunan observed a sharp rise in severe lung cancer cases following vaccination, often diagnosed in advanced stages, leading to death within months across a wide age range. In Beijing, Mr. Wang noted that even in areas with clean air, lung cancer is claiming lives, including among non-smokers and non-drinkers. Similarly, Mr. Tian from Shanghai and Mr. Zhang from Dalian reported abrupt increases in lung cancer cases among their acquaintances and family. Official data released by the Chinese Communist Party in February 2022 shows that China recorded approximately 4.82 million new cancer cases and 2.57 million cancer-related deaths that year. Of these, more than 1.06 million were lung cancer cases, with deaths from lung cancer exceeding 730,000, which is significantly higher than the figures for other types of cancer. Unemployment spikes in China, job market chaos. China's youth unemployment rate remains high, making this the toughest graduation season for college graduates. The ride-hailing industry is saturated in many areas, leaving both recent graduates and so-called flexible workers struggling to find employment. At the same time, older workers are also facing challenges, with some 35-year-olds being laid off while those in their 60s are forced to seek new jobs. This situation paints a bleak picture of the current state of the Chinese economy. On May 21, the National Bureau of Statistics of China released April's unemployment data by age, 14.7% for urban 16 to 24 year olds not in school, 7.1% for 25 to 29 year olds, and 4% for 30 to 59 year olds. Despite recent changes to how these rates are calculated, they remain high with last year's figures showing a record high of 21.3% for young people. The official statistics include not just college graduates but also those entering the workforce after secondary education. Peking University scholar Zhang Danden noted last year that the actual youth unemployment rate might have peaked at 46.5%, much higher than reported. This year, China anticipates a record number of college graduates, about 11.79 million, further increasing job market pressures. The Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Human Resources and Social Security noted that 2024 will see 210,000 more graduates than in 2023, emphasizing the growing employment challenge. In this context, the term new flexible workers has emerged, referring to individuals like truck drivers, ride-hailing drivers, couriers, and food delivery workers. These workers typically lack social security and health insurance and depend heavily on daily earnings. Notably, a significant number of these workers are well-educated, with 38% holding at least an associate degree, and some even possessing master's degrees. Additionally, many individuals who have experienced bankruptcy or layoffs in other sectors are now relying on ride-hailing for survival. However, flexible employment in China's ride-hailing sector is facing significant challenges in recent times. Report from the paper on May 21 highlighted that cities such as Jingdezhen, Intian, Suzhou, Chongqing, Putian, and Shangqiu have issued risk warnings about the industry's saturation. Many regions report that the demand for ride-hailing services is far below the number of available vehicles, with some platforms operating with fewer than 50 cars and receiving less than 1,000 orders daily. Ride-hailing drivers are struggling, often not surpassing 20 rides a day, which translates to a daily income of just over 200 yuan, about 28 US dollars and 12 cents. This financial strain isn't new. Last year, cities such as Changsha, Sanya, and Shenzhen also issued warnings about declining orders and market saturation. In an interview, Peng Peng, executive director from the Guangdong Institute for Institutional Reform, commented that the glut in the ride-hailing market mirrors China's broader economic difficulties, pushing more unemployed individuals into this low-threshold sector due to limited employment alternatives. As previously reported, on May 18, at Renmin University of China's inaugural Shenzhen Finance Forum, Ma Jiantang, former party secretary of the Development Research Center of the State Council, advocated for embracing the longevity era and eliminating age discrimination in the labor market. 
he proposed adjusting the classification of age groups for the elderly, suggesting that people aged 60 to 70 be considered young elderly due to their good health and continued desire to work. He further categorized those aged 70 to 80 as middle elderly and those over 80 as old elderly. This has sparked a trending Weibo topic titled Expert Says We Should Support Reemployment Needs of 60 to 70 Year Olds. The topic quickly drew ridicule from netizens for the expert's suggestion. Many pointed out the irony of being laid off at 35 and needing to seek reemployment at 60. It seems that this only happens in China. In January of this year, a video of a 38 year old man in Beijing went viral. The video showed the man secretly working as a food delivery driver after being laid off. He did this to cover his family's expenses and rent without them knowing. However, his wife eventually found out. The man explained the difficulties he faced in finding a new job, saying that, they, want someone under 35, I am 38, it's hard to find a job. Many videos on Chinese social media show public libraries in cities like Beijing, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen becoming temporary shelters for the unemployed. These libraries offer free air conditioning, hot water, and charging outlets, helping unemployed white-collar workers pretend they are still at work. Some former company executives, after being laid off, hide their situation from their families. They leave home with their briefcases every morning, pretending to go to work, but instead spend their time in libraries. This trend has become a hot topic online with people saying China has entered an era of comprehensive layoffs. Nikkei reports surge in desperate Chinese families fleeing to America amid economic slump. Due to economic downturns, debt, and a bleak outlook for their future, many middle-class Chinese families are risking dangerous journeys to reach the Mexican border, hoping for a chance to live in the United States. They face threats such as robbery, treacherous boat trips, corrupt police, mudslides, and even the possibility of dying in the jungle, each with their own heartbreaking stories. According to U.S. Customs and Border Protection CBP, data, the number of Chinese immigrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border surged to over 37,000 in 2023, which is 10 times the number seen in pre-pandemic years. During the fiscal year from October 2022 to September 2023, U.S. Border Patrol encountered Chinese immigrant families 6,645 times, and from October 2023 to the present, 7,081 times. In the fiscal year 2022, this number was 1,151. The family of 32-year-old Wang Zhongwei is one such example. On a rainy night in May 2023, as reported by Nikkei on May 23rd, Wang and his family, along with about 20 others, boarded a large wooden boat on a remote beach in Capulana, Colombia. It was midnight, and Wang couldn't even see his own hands. He strapped his 14-month-old son to his chest while his wife sat behind him. Their seven-year-old daughter and grandparents sat together. Throughout the two-hour journey, waves constantly tossed their small boat several meters into the air. Wang and his wife clung to the sides of the boat, trying to keep their baby's face dry with a raincoat. All the passengers were soaked from head to toe. He said, the boat ride took two hours, and my son cried for two hours. When he was exhausted from crying, I worried that he had stopped breathing. I still remember his cries to this day. Despite the perilous journey, Wang said that he did not regret coming here. There is no hope for his family if they go back to China. Since 2021, China's real estate bubble has wiped out the savings of many middle-class families. Wang used to run a clothing factory in Wanzhou, exporting women's shirts to Europe, mainly France and Italy. Before the pandemic, he had 30 to 40 employees and made annual profits of $30,000 to $60,000. He and his wife enjoyed a comfortable life with a house and a car. The pandemic, however, forced him to close his factory, leaving him with heavy debts. In 2021, after closing his factory, Wang became a driver for the ride-hailing service Didi. Although he had some savings, his financial burden kept growing. He recalled that he thought about taking own life every day. It felt like the world was a cage with no hope. At this time, his brother in Los Angeles told him about a route to the U.S. Wang sold his house and car 
gathered all his savings, and quickly left China. Having settled into his new life, Wang organized a volunteer event for Chinese immigrants on a sunny Saturday morning in April at a small plaza in Monterey Park, Los Angeles, together with other Chinese immigrants who had similar experiences. Furthermore, Chinese immigrants have created a network of information in South America using social media platforms like Douyin, TikTok, YouTube, and Telegram. Those ahead share the latest updates with those behind, advising on what works, what doesn't, who can be trusted, and who cannot. Contact details for smugglers are shared in these groups. Commenting on this issue, Zonghan Shi, a Chinese economic policy expert at the University of California, San Diego, said, It's very unusual for a middle-income country with positive economic growth, like China, to have a large outflow of illegal immigrants. The risks of taking illegal routes are too high. This indeed suggests a certain level of desperation for them. CCP launches military drills around Taiwan, a share plunge while Taiwan stocks soar. Following the inauguration of Taiwan's new president, the Chinese Communist Party initiated military exercises on May 23 and 24 in the Taiwan Strait and surrounding areas, including Kinmen, Matsu, Wuchio, and Dongin. Reports from CCTV noted that the Air Force deployed numerous fighter jets for a full-scale patrol around Taiwan, with ships also advancing towards Taiwanese waters. Despite these maneuvers following the peaceful presidential transition in Taiwan on May 20, many viewed them as mere theatrics intended for a domestic audience, rather than genuine military threats. In a notable development, this action prompted starkly different responses in the stock markets of mainland China and Taiwan. Mainland China's A shares plummeted significantly, whereas Taiwan's market reached a historic high, suggesting that the CCP's aggressive posturing may be counterproductive. In detail, on May 23, the Taiwan Weighted Index opened up by 117 points, quickly setting another record high, despite a brief downturn. Notably, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, saw its shares increase by 1.5% to 877 new Taiwan dollars, reaching another all-time high. These market fluctuations underscore investor sentiments and reflect genuine market confidence. The divergent reactions in the stock markets across the Taiwan Strait during the CCP's military exercises have ignited extensive discussions on social media platforms both domestically and internationally. On social media platform X, users mockingly commented on the CCP's tactics, Taiwan's stock reaching new highs shows its desperate struggles, while thousands of declines in A-shares prove the economy is improving, or can you give our emperor some face? Another said that taking control of Taiwan by force is the most shameless deception by the communist bandits. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.